Hey, this is Ronald Carroll from Mad Skills University. And this is my retake on Introduction to Venture Resolve, free version 18.6. And this video, what I want to do is not only show you how to use this and that, but I want to actually give you real applications so when you start editing an Adventure Resolve, you're not lost. Now to put things together. At the end of this video, we're going to do an actual horror trailer introduction using speed ramping and things like that to give you a better understanding how to actually use DaVinci Resolve. If you're a beginner to DaVinci Resolve, then this will get you started actually using DaVinci Resolve in a fun way. But I'm a video editor who likes to create content like commercials and ads and things like that. You can make money on the side doing or create cool stuff. So without further ado, let's get started. Down here we have seven pages or modules. So this first module is really just for my imaging. I can also drag image right here or drag it to the timeline as well. This will be my cut screen. If I want to do specific cuts and cut all day and trim all day. Edit page. You can spend most of your time over here on the edit page. This will be my fusion page but you want to roll your sleeves up on that but it's really cool to work with because you're working with Node and they're a lot easier to work with once you get the gist of it. Color grading, color correction, this thing does everything and DaVinci Resolve is known for color grading. Fairlight is music. Enter music and you, you'll know what all this stuff means already. You have effects up here. You can bring down special things like echo and delay and the whole nine yards. Then of course when you're done with your project you want to render that project and you can do that right here. If you're working in you know Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere you can export to that format as well. YouTube, Vimeo, whatever you want to do it's all right here. You can also go vertical so keep that in mind. If you're doing a short it's going to be you know vertical Let's go over here to our edit module or edit page. We're going to bring in a couple of videos here and we'll start there. Bring down my paraglider and I'll bring down my surfers and put them on top. And there's my audio. This right here is my snap to tool. If I want to trim this clip, I'll just grab it by the end and just bring it over and snap it and trim it there. Same thing with this audio. I'll snap it there. That's what this tool is, on snap or snap, as you're bringing two video clips together. Here will be my link tool. So these will be linked, audio and video. And if I want to unlink those, I'll uncheck that. Now I just click on the audio and press backspace to get rid of it. If I click on this, it brings everything into the time frame, makes it longer or smaller. If I hold Alt and scroll down, that's what happens. If I hold control, it moves the entire timeline. Let's fit it back in. If I hold shift, that's what that does if I scroll up and down. These are your basic lock it, you know, don't see it, don't see nothing, that kind of thing. I can also make some changes on my timeline here. Let's make this smaller. If I want to create a duplicate of these two files or one of these files, I'll select it, press Alt or Option, and just drag it over. There's my duplicate. Without this on, the snap on, it's going to just roll right through it. With the snap on, it's going to snap play. So I wanna, so I'm going to delete both of these, hold control, and select those two together and backspace. To get rid of the excess tracks here, I'll go down to delete empty tracks. What I want to do now is I'm going to bring down some text. So let's go back over to our effects. Let's go over to Toolbox, double click that, and go to Titles. And here I have tons of titles. If you run across something that has DaVinci logo on it, that means you have that's in the studio version, so it's going to say DaVinci Studio. But if I want to see what something looks like, just drag across. Callouts, I mean you have it, glitches, drop-ins. Let's go up here, just get a basic title. I'm going to see it selected now, left click and grab it and drop it on top of my video. I'm going to drag it out, left click that. Now I go into what they call the inspector. And in the inspector I can change anything here. So we're going to call this DaVinci Resolve 18. I'm going to go down here, I can change the font, make it bold, change the size, let's make it big. And as you can see, we can do so much to the text. So it's all right here. If I had two text here, something like this, what you'll see are three different boxes. So if I play that, I can stop it. I can also play it back. In basic compositing, we can do stuff like this. So I'm going to bring this above it. 
I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go over here to composite. That so I'll go down here to multiply. And now the video is behind the text. You can also do the same thing with photograph here. If I want to go up here and insert a track, if I insert a track up here and I brought a photo down, it will be the exact same thing. So just drag it over. And then I can just turn this one off. Click on this, go down, but go down here to, to multiply, and it works the exact same way. You can change the opacity, things like that. But another way to do this, click on the top picture, hit your backspace key, let's bring this one back. But now I'm going to do something different. So this is on the bottom and this is on the top. Click on the top picture, and I'm going to change it to foreground. I'm going to click on the bottom and I'm going to go over here to settings and I'm going to go to compositing and I'm going to change it to alpha. So go all the way down and that's the exact same thing. So you're going to see the paraglider come in. But what's cool about this though, I add a track. So I add a video track on the bottom. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go back into my media. I'm going to bring this track down below. As you can see now, it's bluish. Now if I click back on here and go back into settings and I invert that, now I have this video inside the text. So I can also take out the inspector as well. With fonts, if I go to effects and come down to titles and then go over to the last option, which is custom titles, and I pop that in, if I go over to Inspector and look at fonts, you can go to Google Fonts, thefont.com, or you can go to 1001fonts.com, and you can install those normally in Windows, Mac, like you normally would. If you're inside DR18, you need to exit out and then come back in. And then if you came over here and look for those fonts, you will find them. Let's do some basic editing. I'm going to go back over here to my edit module page. As you can see, we have different audio files. So I can bring a file down here. And here's a mixer for that. So I can change the audio. And I can take the mixer off. As I'm bringing down different video files, I can just bring them down and put them on top. Then I'll bring down another file. And we'll put it right there. And it has audio too. So if I do that, I can separate them that way. But they aren't linked. Press backspace on that and bring that file together. Click here, and that will fit everything in the timeline. I can mark anywhere in the video right here by clicking the marker or pressing M. I can also change the colors. Your cut, basic cut editing tool is here. Razor blade cuts are here. Click, click. To undo that, hit Control Z. Over here I have basic just audio and video. If I left click inside the audio one, I can change that to anything I want. If I right click in here, I can add a track and that will be for video. If I right click down in the audio section, and the same thing, it'll be for audio. I can change the way things look up here. This will adjust the track height like I did with these, holding down the shift key and scrolling the mouse up and down. You can lock it right there. As you play, you can play a file here. You can also play backwards. Stop it. If I scroll up, I can see all of my assets over here, but I can change the way that looks, anything I want. I can also turn this on up here or off. I can turn media off where I just have a complete timeline. If I also want to have a dual screen, say I want to edit the, the clip I'm about to insert, go up here to workbase and come down here to single. And now it's on single view. But if I want two screens, and that's what I had, I'll show you how I did that. Now I turn single off, so I'll have two. Here's how that works. I have a video here. Whatever's on my timeline is going to show to the right. If I bring another video over here, now that's going to show to the left. Take this along and just see what's going on. Say I want this to start about right here. Now I can just press I. And I want it to end about right here. I'll press O. So now when I bring that clip down, as you can see, you see the lines on the clip? I pre-cut that. You also want to optimize your media. So what you want to do is go up here and make sure that this is checked. Use optimized media. I can highlight the media. 
right click and go down to generate optimized media and playback will be smoother so let's switch it up we go over here to effects and again we have video transitions here and we have audio transitions we're not going to use those but let's go down to video transitions and then we can easily just grab what we want, click it, and insert it into the video. Here's my transition. Let's grab the end of it here and drag it out. Then I go to Inspector. There's my transition. I can change the duration. I can even change what I'm using here. Change the curves on it. Let's see what that looks like. Spacebar. So it's slow, so we can speed it up. We can also move it to the other side, like that. Let's see what that looks like. You can also change the colors down here. In and out, fade in. You might want to put that on all your videos, so it's just kind of a way to feather it out and feather it in. But you can change things on here, the border, so on and so forth. And you can keyframe all of this as well. That's how you apply transitions. And anyone you want to apply, I like the idea of putting a solid color up here too because I can have two transitions. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I'll go over here to generators. I'll go down here to solid color. I'll grab that and I'll put it right between the two video clips. I'll take this, I'll click on this transition, hit shift backspace to get rid of it. Now what I can do is go back to transitions. And I'll put this on the right side. And we'll stretch it out. And then we'll put this one on the left side. Like that. We'll stretch it out. Hold Alt. Scroll up to make the clips longer or shorter. Remember that. Now let's see what that looks like. So that's a way of getting a, a double transition in between two clips. So we can play with those transitions just a little bit. Here's just the end and then I can switch over to the out side as well. I'm going to show you a few different things. So that was a hard transition in and I apply that to the front. Then I'll go back up here and let's bring down a glitch. Let's put that uh, right there. Let's see what that glitch looks like. So there's my glitch. So you can insert any kind of transition here, including what regular glitches or what we call fusion transitions. But just go through all these. And what you want to do is mark your favorites. That's the number one thing. Mark your favorites. And that way you know where they are. I want to replace this sky with this paraglider. What I want to do is click on the top video that I want to replace the sky with and I want to go over here to effects. I'm going to type in 3D and this is filler so it's coming from open. I'm going to go down to filters and that's going to give me 3D keyer. I'm going to grab 3D keyer and drop it on top of the video clip. Then I'm going to go up here to this drop down menu and I'm going to select Open FX Overlay. Now I'm just going to click here and just drag over. And anything that's black is going to be replaced. Not going to be perfect. Once I'm inside here, I can go up here to Spectre. And now I can find my effect, which is right here. And I can make changes here. Output. You can adjust all this key adjustments, output layers. So you can play around with this and get this absolutely perfect if you like. I can press Control or Command plus F as in Frank to go full screen and see what that looks like. I can go in there inside the editor here with the effects for the 3D keyer and I can change, I can remove some of this, some of that. But this just gives you an idea of how to do some of this stuff. One quick way that we can turn this into more of a let's talk about compositing for a minute 
Now you can see if I look at both these videos, they're not formatted the same. So I could change that by clicking on the top video, going over here to my drop down menu, going to transform, and then just go ahead and drag that video out so it fits the full screen. Now with compositing, and now I can go to the top video clip, click on it, and I can change this to multiply, color burn, and this will allow me to see both of my video clips at the same time. And just try different things to see what works for you. Now I'm going to show you how to do a really quick pan and zoom. So click on the video clip you want to pan and zoom into. Go over here again to the square box. Click on the drop down menu. Let's go to dynamic zoom. Here I can do a quick crop. Here I can do a quick transform as well. So I don't have to go up here to transform. And a crop, this basic crop, I can just crop it, grab it in. And just crop the video any way I want. But the pan and zoom, let's go back over here. And I'm going to go to dynamic zoom. Now we're going to have two boxes here. One's on the outside, it's red. And one is green. So it's going to start on the red and go into the green as we go along. So you can actually just do this as you go. So let's bring that red back over. And we're going to zoom this in. And let's see what that looks like. So see it starts inside the green and now it's going back out to the red. Hit control F as in Frank. And then you can also reverse it. So I can say let's bring this and make it small. And let's click on our green and take it out to the corners like that. As you can see it has a line telling you where it's going to go. I can have it go out to this corner and go off the screen as well. And let's make it go full screen and put it outside the screen. And let's try that. This is a quick, easy way to do a pan and zoom. There's my red. So it was actually coming out here and going way inside and following the actual paraglider. If I want to do a freeze frame, I'll take it to where I want to start that freeze frame. And I'll go ahead and grab a cut tool. I'm going to cut it there. And we'll end the freeze right there. Go back over here, select that, right click this. I'll go up to change clip speed. Click on that. I'm going to go down here to freeze frame instead of going to, of course, speed change and all that, and click change. So let's see how that looks. You play it back, spacebar, it's going to stop right there, and then continue. Okay, let me show you how to do basic tracking. What I want to do is I want to track. A red car in here. So I'm going to go up here and I want to track this red car until it leaves the frame and then put a call out on top of it. Now you can track multiple things here, but once it gets right there, I can cut that. So let's cut it and make sure these are linked so they cut together. Highlight that, backspace. So now we have our basic clip. I'm going to come over here to Fusion. I'm going to press Shift plus Spacebar. I'm going to get a Select Tool menu. In this Select Tool menu, just type Tracker. Here's your Planar Tracker. Here's your Tracker. We'll do that one next. Add it. And this is really easy to do. And once I have that tracker, click on it until it turns red. I like to use my arrow keys on my keyboard to use this. You can do whatever you want to do and place it right over the car. We can change a lot of things here. The width, the height, so you can play with these settings. I just want to show you how to do this basically. As you can see, I'm in the headlight of the car and that's what I'm tracking. I can also track multiple cars. So if I added another tracker here, I add tracker. And now here's a second track. Right, so I can add a multiple tracker and add it, but we're not going to do that here. Tracker there and set. Move it up over a little bit more. All I want to do here now is go over here to where it says track forward from current. Press that. So I could have zoomed in a little bit more on that red car. And that's what I mean by using 
these things down here. But that's okay. In addition to tracking it forward, what you also want to do is track it backwards. Press OK to that. We'll go over here and we'll track it in reverse all the way back to the beginning. So that's because I, I highlighted the card to the left a little bit too much. So there's my red card. So that's easy fix, no problem. Let it go all the way back. Press OK. And that's still going to look pretty good. So now what I want to do is put a call out over here. So select nothing. T is for text. Let's bring that down. Grab this end of the connector and connect it to that. Now we'll go over here to our text box and we'll type in red car. We'll go back down here to our tracker. I'm going to go up here to operation. Click on that. Go to operation again and match move. So I'm going to match the text to the car. Go over here to the text. Click on the text box. Grab the red little arrow here and move it up. And up and over over the car. Then we're going to reduce the size of course. And now move it to it slightly off the frame like the car is. Once it turns red you can move it. Like that. That's what we'll do. So now we'll play that back. So there's a small adjustment there. Let's go back over here to my tracker. So I can move my tracker here just by grabbing it. Let's go a little bit more to the right on this tracker. That's what we'll do. We'll go back to our track over here and we're going to retract that. What I should have did is really made everything really small into that red car, maybe into the headlights. But I just want to show you how to do this and then if you make a mistake how to correct it because that's how you really learn how to edit. So that should be a lot better. Give it a second to reset itself and you'll see everything here in a second. All right, now let's try it again. Spacebar, way better. So that's how we track and that's how we correct tracking for basic tracking. And let's press Control F on our screen and see what this looks like full screen. But something else I can also do is if I wanted to just bounce this video, I can right click it. And of course, before I render this, I want to optimize the media. You can also render this in place. So you can just render it out and what that means is you can just bounce this one particular frame out and then bring it back in. There's a lot of special effects that you can go up to the library or the effects library and drag down as well. If you see this to get rid of it, just click on this box right here. If you're not working with media files, get rid of your media files so you can see what you're doing. If you're not using effects at the time, get rid of those. So now you just have a clean worksheet. Okay, let's talk about tracking. Now in the Speed ramping. Let's go over speed ramping really quickly. And you can use whatever you like. I'm going to bring that down to my timeline. Now I'm going to right click on the video clip. I'm going to make sure I check read time curve and read time controls. Once I do that, I'm going to click right here and get a menu. I'm going to uncheck read time frame and check read time speed. Now you should see a line down here. This is actually in slow motion. What I want to do here now is go over here. I'm going to take my timeline down and I want this part where he crosses this guy over to speed. So I take it back to right there. Go over here and click keyframe note. That's going to come up right there. 
I'm going to take it over to where I want the speed ramping to stop. And about right there, I'll click in the middle and click right there. So that's what I want to speed ramp. I have a dot there and a dot there. So bring this up. The more I go up, the faster it is. And now you'll see that the speed is 229 versus 100%. If I go over here, I'm going to slow this down even more. Let's click another keyframe. And we'll go about right there, and then we'll end that. And on this one, I have dots here. I'm going to bring that down. Now, these are my dots, like the straight lines. That's this. Or I can go to curves. So now if I go back and play this, here's how it looks. And see him speed up? And now he'll slow down even more right over here. And then now you can play with these settings. And you can go all the way up if you want. 42, 43%. There's your 100%. And that's your 300%. Lastly, I want to point out that if I switch from this mode to that mode, I'll get this type of wave. And I can actually grab one of these nodes or dots here and change it. And this one maxed out at 300, but you can. Go in there and make it, you can be 500, whatever you want to do. Let's talk about color for a second. And we're going to go over color correction. I'm not a colorist, so we're not going to do color grading. Just basic color correction. And then we're going to do some color matching. And I'm going to show you how to apply LUTs. And you can also import your own LUT. So let's go ahead and bring these two. And I'll bring back our dual screen because now is where we can use that. Let's take off here where it says single viewer mode. Full screen, what this does is up here where you have this white DaVinci Resolve thing, you can go down here and go full screen to take that off. I want to show you that as well. And then let's take this off so we have two screens. So now we can clearly see the color difference in these two screens. So we'll go over here to color and click on color. And the first Thing when it comes to basic changes and you're looking at contrast or you can change that here, make it darker or lighter. And this gives you an idea of lift, gamma, gain, and offset. But if you go over here, right here, right next to the color wheel, you're going to see the R HDR gray. Click on that instead and you'll see dark, shadow, or medium, the midtones, light, and global. So that's the best one to go off of. And here I can change anything on a per color basis. So I can go down here and add more green just by grabbing it and taking it down. I can reset that right here. You can change your temperature, your tint, change the color itself to hue, contrast, all. And these kind of work together, these two. But play around with that. Or you can just go down here and just use this. So I'll add some darkness to it here in the middle. I can also just create new nodes or points of contrast. And that looks a little bit better. So look at this and we'll do the same thing here. Darken it up. Go down it. We can scroll down here. Now, I'm not trying to be perfect here, but you can play around with this. And there are video lessons out there on this so specifically. And I want to make it a little bit darker. Like that. Let's change the tint just a little bit. Go back over here. So what I can do now is like I said, I can take all these changes I just did to this. And if, if I want to copy these attributes, which are right here, and color match that to this other. There's two ways you can do it, but the easiest way to do it is to just click on the node. Hit Control or Command C as in copy. And just copy and paste it. Then to go down to here to this video. Hit Control or Command V as in victory and paste it. So let's see what that looks like. So we match the color on here to the color on the second clip. Hit Control D to take off the effect I just applied, and then Command or Control D as in David again to bring it back on. If I want to put a LUT in here, I go up here to LUTs, click on LUT, and there are all kind of LUTs. 
And if I scroll over the LUT, it will show me what it's going to look like in my video. As I also said, you can import your own LUT. A lot of times this red LUT is used for like commercials because it's really bright. And you can change it at that point, but same thing applies here. So if I just take the LUT, right click on it, and say apply to current node. Now I have that LUTs there. And it affects the, all the LUTs going downstream. Let me show you really quickly how to keyframe and also how to play with your properties over in the inspector. And if I go over here to the right on the transform, we're going to play around with zoom in, zoom out on this and make, a, make my logo turn 360. The best way to do it is to click on everything, but I could just click on one thing at a time. So I could just click on this if I'm only keyframing this part. I like to do it all because who knows what I'm going to do right here. But we start with that. Everything's ready to go. I can move over a little bit down my timeline and then do something. So what we're going to do is make it small and see how the keyframe is already starting. And then move over some more and do something else. I'm going to bring it back up right here. Then I'll go over a little bit more. I want this to go into a 360 turn. Here, just type in 360. And that's going to turn automatic. And then go over a little bit more. Move it up. And we'll go more. And then we're going to pitch it a little bit. And then we'll go back a little more. And we'll yaw it a little bit. Now what happens is anything you see in any of these fields, if it has a diamond next to it, it's keyframable. So keep that in mind, even compositing. Then we'll go back to the end. And what I'm going to do here is just take everything back to normal. We'll also turn off our little burn there. And that's it. Okay, so all our keyframing is in. And if you see this, you know it's all keyframe. You'll also see a keyframe thing down here. And we can actually adjust it down here as well if we need to. So there's our keyframing. Let's do that again. And I can also do speed ramping in here and, and add in more things as well. If you watch over here, as I play this, you'll see what's going on. We're going to do a quick horror video intro. We're going to bring in this guy. And let's switch over to edit mode. We'll bring in our evil clown. And a close up. Go up here and drop it. They're going to go in this order. When I start this, what I don't want to do is have the zoom affect all the other videos. So what we're going to do is scroll down here. And when he opens his eyes, that's what we need to zoom through his eye. Go back. Go back to about right here. Let's go frame by frame. The eyes are open. Let's go back to where he closes his eyes. And right there where we should zoom through. So I'll cut that right there. And let's transform this video. And bring this out so it fills the screen all the way. And now I can start my dynamic zoom from here. So I'll go over here, click on the drop down menu, go to dynamic zoom. Remember it starts on the green and ends on the red. So it's starting there is not what I really want. So I'm going to move this out to the edges. Then I'm going to come down to the red, click on the red like that. And click on the corner here and move it in. And move it over his eyes. We can make that smaller. Like that. So what we should have. Is a zoom into his eyes and they open. That's what we want. We want that now to go into. The crazy clown. And let's before we do that. Go back over here. And transform the clown. Let him fill the screen. And good, it's not zooming in. So what I'm going to do, I want that to zoom into his eye right there. Take my cut tool here, a razor blade, and cut that. 
Let's see how that looks. There we go. So that's going to be a little shocking effect. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to start big and go back into his eye. So I'm going to go back up here to dynamic zoom. We're going to start more out here. And let's find the red inside here. Move this over. Find the red. And let's zoom in. Put it on his eye. And move that green back over. Let's see what that looks like. Spacebar. Way too long. Let's shorten it up. And that has to be smaller. And more in his eye. And there's my zoom through there. And let's find our last clip. This one, we're going to do some speed wrapping here. I just want to kind of get things lined up here. Because once he goes here, I want this to start on him coming out like this. And then go out here. So once he hits the wall, we can stop that. Now we're going to do a series of jump cuts. So I'm going to cut that there. And we're going to speed wrap that. I'll go down here and we can just cut that. That's why it's called a jump cut. So we're going to cut that. Shift delete. And now he should be coming at us. And that's what we want. And give this time to process. I'm going to go back over here to transform. And make sure we're outside the frame. Here too. So now he's coming at us. So that's what we want. So what I'm going to do here is hit Control plus R. And I start my speed change. I'm going to right click this. I'm going to go up here. Click on this. So now I have both of them. I'm going to click on this right here. This right here. I'm going to uncheck. Read time frame and check read time speed. So I'm going to read time the speed and I'm just going to drag this all the way up. Shift backspace and see what we have. So we can speed ramp this as well. So let's go back to right click and click on read time controls and read time curve. Go down here. Unselect read time frame and we're going to select read time speed. Drag this along. Because what I want to do is start speeding that up right about there. So I'll put a keyframe right there and let it run all the way out. It's going to be a little bit unrendered. But from right here, I'm going to drag this up. Like all the way up. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Say Control F, start from the beginning. So let's bring this in a little bit to focus more on him. And let's go back. There we go. And that's that jump cut I put in. I think you get the point. I'm going to bring in a few sound effects, put it all together and see what we have. I did make a few more changes to this in terms of bringing in music to match what was going on with the video. And I would have put more effort into the color grading to make it look more like a horror movie, a horror trailer. But I just want to show you how to do this zoom through and do it nice and quick. So this is what it looks like now. So as you can see, there are a lot of cool things you can do in DaVinci Resolve as a beginner and not get lost all the time. And the goal here was to teach you how to get started with DaVinci Resolve. And in my more extensive video on this, which I have linked, you can actually see how to create multi-screens and do a lot of other things. For an easy lesson on Fusion, check out the music video I created. So if you like the video, please hit that button, smash it, and leave a comment. I'll be more than happy to respond to you. And of course, please subscribe. Now I also have a complete DaVinci Resolve playlist. If you're into for more or CapCut 3.5, I have videos on that as well. And I have comparative videos. So check those out. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great and creative day.